<laughs> what is going on beautiful people welcome back to another amazing and impactful episode of the true health forever podcast where we tell our best life mm, 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 through the lens of holistic health of your host right i feel like when we take our time with it we hit it we lock eyes you know what i'm saying it's crispy yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm your host devon travel creator of black wall street the board game and currently with a broken jaw and as usual i have with me I'll give you some context later. <laughs> it hurts. As usual, I have with me the beautiful, the smiling, the curlific need for speed queen herself. Speed. Don't you? Oh, you go track like you don't want to be speeding. That, that's what we're gonna do today on the podcast. You gonna start off like that? I love to talk them out. What's up, party people? My name is Sinclair, aka the Health, Health Nerd. Nerd. And um, apparently, I no, I do. I. I do. I, I I am a little I am a safe speeder. Meaning I, I do speed, but I don't go, you know, crazy above the speed limit, but I do it in a safe way, right? I believe you, Sinclair. You were in the car mo anyways. Yeah, I'd be scared to be honest with y'all. Uh mm -hmm. so a little bit of context. Uh, you know, I was playing basketball today, and it's really my fault because I usually don't play basketball on Saturdays, Quick. I thought I was I was like, where's yeah, I usually don't even don't even who. Should have known. I should have known, right? I should I should have stayed my butt out of there. I lost four games, only one, two. It was an atrocious run. Um, but my Fitbit alarm went off, and I was up. So I was like, if I'm up, I might as well go play. Side note: Turn off your Fitbit alarms. This man has a Fitbit alarm at like 5 a.m. every single day. Anyways, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, I was playing basketball, ran in for a rebound, and got just uppercutted with an elbow i don't even know what 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 dude was doing throwing an elbow like this or maybe he was jumping to get the rebound i don't know but that just rocked my jaw and i couldn't talk for like an entire game still played lost clearly lost that game but still played um and then like two games later i got hit with another elbow this one to the side pow I was like, oh goodness gracious so long story short you know it might not seem like my jaw hurts but my jaw hurts so the queen may be a you know carrying us this episode we'll see but ah ah so let me let me choose my words wisely for the rest of this episode i was looking at a post from anisa mm -hmm. right and anisa been 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 on it lately on on the ig game like she's been posting some good inspirational stuff um but she posted a picture of herself bikini picture on the beach and she put in the post that she wasn't you know, at a, a place in her health journey on where she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But what I loved about the post was she went in detail about like what she's still been able to accomplish with the body and with the health that she does have. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think a lot of people sometimes they'll, they'll do a post like that and just make excuses or complain about things. But she was like 100 percent positive. And I've been put inside the post like, wow. I, I love this energy. And she was like, this body got me through a global pandemic. This body got me through my first year of marriage. This body put me through my licensing to become a, a what, what is she, a psychiatrist. Like she's just named all the things that she was able to still accomplish with this body and with this health. Mm -hmm. But then at the end, she was like, but don't get used to this body or something yeah. like that. So that kind of put me into the mindset of how are we reframing the struggles that we're going through? How are we reframing and trying to shift into a growth mindset when we go through a loss, when we go through maybe a tough time in our life? How can we, yeah, again, just reshape that to actually make progress rather than either making excuses or trying to point the fingers at other things, other people that justify where we are today. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of the the mindset that I'm, that I'm going into, Queen. Yep. You good with that? Cool. Let's do it. What'd you put in this chia pudding? It's fire, right? Oh, it's or not. It's cool. It oh, has an interesting that because it was really good. It's chocolatey. Yeah, it's the new Organifi Harmony. It's yeah, Organifi. I'm, I'm gonna need y'all to to talk to me before you make any type of flavor decisions. Okay, that one. <laughs> anyway, Queen, you ready to get into it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's all good. <laughs> you you, you doctored it up. Uh, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into the episode. I don't like 
chocolate, but I like cacao. You and husband. Oh. I, I also too. really like you. I love you as well. But Thanks. anyways, we talked about like the difference between chocolate, like milk chocolate is a little much cacao, like where it actually comes from. I don't mind that. It's got a different flavor to it. Anywho, well, I digress. So today we're talking about growth mindset. Mm -hmm. So I want to first start with what is growth mindset. Um, and, you know, it, it's a lot of people talk when you talk about growth mindset, you feel like you're talking about it in comparison to a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. And you're not. I mean, yes, we are. Okay. Yeah, I just, yes, we are. So <laughs> fixed mindset being like, I am who I am. People don't change, mm. right? I feel like we've heard a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people throughout my life have that mindset. You can't like, teach an old dog new, new tricks. tricks. Yes, you know, yeah. I've been doing this for 50 years. I ain't changed. <laughs> or, <laughs> Why is that just like the standard old person voice? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this for <laughs> We respect our elders, yes, I promise you. <laughs> But yeah, I've heard like, you know, people don't oh. change, um, but I fundamentally believe that people do and can change, mm -hmm. right? With the right habits, with the right mindset. I feel like that's really step zero is you have to yeah. have the right mindset and then the rest will, will come. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have a graphic um, that shows a little quote on um, what growth mindset is. So let's pop that up and that can kind of guide our, our discussion. But um, basically it says, in a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Dedication. Mm. Uh. Whoa. whoa. Mm. Uh. Um, brains and talent are just the starting point. Mm. Right? So kind of breaking it down. People believe that in their most basic, their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Mm. So basic abilities like... What would be some basic abilities that you think can be developed in through dedication and hard work? Reading. Reading, writing. Podcasting. Literally any any skill you have. A sport. Right. Yeah. I feel like it's the mindset. Dance. Right. The mindset that like practice makes perfect. Yes. Right. Type of thing. Or practice makes growth, even if you don't believe that perfection exists. Mm -hmm. Practice um, makes progress. I like that one. Uh -huh. Practice makes progress. No. Uh, okay. Uh, uh. Okay. <laughs> um, so I know an example for me um, is that, you know, I think when I think about my journey in the, uh, the entrepreneurial world. Oh, you're diving right into your example. Huh? Oh, my bad. That, that, that's what you want. You want to, let, let, let's break down growth mindset a little, little bit further okay. before you, you step into the pedestal of, of growth minds of your, your own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. So what does practice look like? for you well like it's developing a routine mm -hmm. like de de define word decide whatever it is you're trying to pro progress right um and develop a routine that's going to get you there so you know if you are an athlete you got to practice your drills you got to practice your your <sighs> dribbling you got to practice your... listen the way the way that you dribble Shut up. like this <laughs> I still pick you on my team though, Sinclair. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anytime. You gotta practice your dribbling, you gotta practice your shooting, you gotta practice practice your offense, your defense, yes, all right. that stuff. So, like for, for entrepreneurship, right? You gotta practice your communication. Mm. You gotta practice your like your um time management. That is a huge, huge. one for me. Oh my gosh. Yes, Especially so if you're like us when you're trying to do it on top of a full-time job. Mm -hmm. If time management is critical. Yes. And I feel like that's been a very that's been a personal struggle for me is how to optimize the time that you do have because it is so precious and so mm. limited uh, we be doing a lot. a lot um the other things things that i have to practice are um not letting my emotions mm. get the best of me so there's you know? time management and then there's self-management what, what what is that I don't know. emotional management. emotional management it's just, I feel like it's, it's basically like discipline because mm. I feel like, and I like, uh, you know, I know we, we mentioned it a lot, but it's because we listen, I listen to it every single day. I'm pretty sure we both listen to it every single day, mm. but the Secret to Success podcast with E.T., C.J., Carl, Jamal, all of them. Squad. Um, I love C.J.'s quote where it's um, discipline kicks in when motivation runs out or something mm. like that. And I like that yeah. because that's what I start to tell myself. And I feel like it's a... I do think that it is slightly a millennial mindset of like, we always think 
that we need to like what we're doing in the moment, mm. right? Which I think in the grand scheme of things, like whatever your career or your purpose is going to be, you should like it. I do believe that. Mm. But that doesn't mean that every single day it's you are going fine. to like it, right? There's right. going to be times when it's tough and you're not are going to you're not going to want to do that. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. And I had a, a kind of a point on that riff, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's two things. It's one, the fact that in our generation, instant gratification right. is the norm. That's right. a part of our culture. If what the, the item doesn't ship in two days, <laughs> get out of here. What? Un, un, yeah, unprofessional. Right. This, right. this is the worst service I've ever had. It took me five days to get my board game. If you don't get off <laughs> Facebook complaining about this five day shipping. Oh, uh, but there's there's that right is if you don't have a, a an app like if i can't order it on my phone i'm good off of it mm -hmm. so i think the the fact that we want what we want as soon as possible kind of hurts that long-term grind for it yeah and the second thing is we care and i think i'm, I'm including myself in this we but I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit better we care so much about people what people think and we've never even met the, that person right right like oh one of my black study snacks i did it on uh cleopatra and in the video i clearly put and obviously you can see i'm still a little hurt right <laughs> <laughs> i clearly said that you know cleopatra's kind of uh wraith and, and ethnic origin as a black queen is still still a little bit questionable yeah someone on there put Psh, this guy doesn't know anything about cleopatra she's clearly not an african queen da, 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 da. and actually i was just like oh my god and i, I was about to type back and i was like no come on relax right, right. You don't even know if that's a real person, first right, of all. Right, right. It could be a bot. It could be 100% a bot. Whether they're a real person or not, they, they can still be a bot. So I feel like Ooh, we that's care. Kind of bar. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> but I feel like we care so much about people think. Mm -hmm. We don't want to release anything that could get uh, not not bashed on, but for the lack of better words, like if it's not perfect and someone's like, oh, that board game's trash. Oh, that dance move you did was trash. Mm -hmm. Oh, Devon, you're out there playing basketball. You're terrible we're afraid of what people are saying rather than working up towards something we want to start at the praise right we want the first time we release something to be praiseworthy i feel like that's just not usually how it goes unless you're a natural born genius but even then you still need to continue to develop that so yeah we're, we're, we're going to talk through a little bit i do have a so the book that we're going to go through um, not go through in details, but Growth Mindset by Dr. Carol. How do you say this last name? Dweck? Or is it just Weck? Dweck. Listen, Dweck. Carol D. <laughs> Carol D. So a quote right here, and then we'll we'll shift over to talk about the Queen's example. But grow, grow your mindset. Think about your hero. Do you think of this person as someone with extraordinary abilities who achieves with little effort? Right. I've only like think about that. I feel like when we think about heroes and who who's your favorite Avengers hero? I feel like you've asked me this. I don't know if I have one. I have multiple, but I do like Tony Stark. Why? Because he's and I I, I see where you're going here. He is human. Which means he's relatable. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm like, oh, I could do that. Right. If I had the ability to <laughs> create like, a whole Iron Man suit but mm. yeah i feel like it makes it more relatable everybody else has like superhuman capabilities so it's like i can't really relate to that i was i'm not an alien i'm human right and i think taking that step further because my favorite is also tony stark slash black panther mm. but tony stark has a level of vulnerability because he's mm. human mm -hmm. in a world of superheroes two you see him bleed you see mm. his you see his literal effort when he's being a superhero. Thor's over here flying, throwing hammers, bringing down lightning. And Tony Stark, yes, he has all his technology, but at the end of the day, like his stuff gets damaged. Sometimes the face mask comes off when he was battling Thanos. You see literally blood coming through. So it's like you see the effort. And I feel like in that kind of battle and seeing someone's like true emotions and putting 120, 150%, they become your favorite. You mm. start to put them up on a pedestal because you're like, dang, I wish I can try like that. Mm, the, not not I wish I could do that, but I wish I could try I I could like try that. Like I wish that. I could triumph like that. Right, because at the end of the day, Tony Stark, I mean, rest in peace, even though it's a fake, <laughs> right. it a fake world. Um, <laughs> that's how real Avengers gets. It's, it's like, like oh, oh, RP, oh, RP, Tony Stark, he's no longer here. But yeah, the fact that he died, I mean, I mean yes, he was successful in a way, but he also died. died. So like, yeah, at the end of the day, it's like, dang, 
Are you, are you willing to try right. that much, 200, 2,000% to put it on the line to possibly fail? And he, sorry, we're getting really deep into this Avengers. Um, <laughs> but if Rename you the about, podcast. <laughs> but even if you think about the movie, right? In mm -hmm. the movie, he even is so vulnerable to the point where like he's battling his own selfishness. Mm. Right. Because he didn't even want to do it. He's Gosh. like, I got my family. I got my Gosh. kid. I got my like, I'm good. I realize everybody else lost something, but I'm good. Gosh. And you're asking me to give this up for the greater good. And it's, yeah, he battles with that. Mm. And I felt like we all as humans built that, too. And it's yep. like, oof. but he ended up doing it anyways. And I feel like that's right. that triumph again. And then mm. pays the ultimate sacrifice. So I feel like he does. Yeah. He's almost painted as the ultimate hero in that way. Right. Not because he didn't struggle, but because you see all of his very human struggles mm -hmm. and he does it anyways. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, good bar, good nice. bar. Woo. All right, we can do a whole other podcast <laughs> on Avengers, Infinity Wars, and breaking down just the mindsets of maybe even heroes. That would be actually pretty fire. Mm -hmm. Breaking down the mindsets I'm of- in that. Right. Coming it, up. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, you do? Yeah, because okay, I feel like it's, out. I mean, like in the world of- uh, like when you're writing scripts, I mean, you, you write, obviously you write scripts, so you know, like hey, each, each them, of them have their different personalities. So I feel like we could break that down in and relate it to like how, how we all approach life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that can be really fun. Actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anywho. Queen, <laughs> let's shift it over to you. Yes. My real life queen superhero over here. Hey, Hey, give us a one or two examples of yeah, just how you've had to shift your own mindset, even if it's currently, whatever, whatever it is, mm -hmm. how you're shifting into a growth mindset or have shifted into a growth mindset. So I think for me, um, yeah, I'm very much in the in the in the trenches right now. So mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not talking from a I've solved it. I've done it. This is in the past. I'm like, this is what I'm doing um, is when I think and I'm talking about, I had mentioned it a little bit previously, but in the entrepreneurial um, world of, you know, me setting my goals for things like Potluck, which we've talked about, um, you know, the app for, for home cooked chefs, home cooked food, um, you know, you, you, you set your goals and then what happens when you put in the effort and things don't go the way you want them to, right? Mm. For reasons, a lot of times you can't control and not letting that hinder further progress, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think that I'm kind of now in the mindset of trying to reframe, um, okay, yeah, you know, this this didn't go the way that you wanted to, but rather than seeing it as like, oh, these things keep going wrong, see it as like, this is my hero story. Mm -hmm. almost. And we had, you know, we had, yep. a, we had a conversation about this the other day, but seeing it as, you know, the heroes are the heroes because they struggle right. because they have villains who are trying to end the world, trying to end their life and their family's lives, all of these things. Mm -hmm. So it's because they have those struggles that they are heroes and they become heroes and they become so triumphant, Facts. right? If they didn't have those struggles, they would just be normal people like us. So I'm trying to have that mindset of getting past this obstacle is what is going to make you into that entrepreneur that you want to be. Mm. So yep. I feel like rather than wallowing in, oh, I'm not that entrepreneur that I want to be right now, be like, whew, keep going because when you get past this, ooh, <laughs> like it's just gonna be one more thing that you got that you can say that you got past in the in the you know that you triumphed over, if that right. makes sense. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm actively trying to work on reframing that, and you know one of the I think really good pieces of advice that you gave me is focus on, <laughs> focus on like the actions, mm. focus on the habits that make you feel like you've done all that you can do and you right. feel like successful, right? Regardless of the outcome. So I think that's the key piece, regardless of the outcome of what you did from the effort that you put in, you feel good mm. and just keep focusing on that and the results will come eventually. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do. Focusing on like, okay, doing a little bit every single day. And I've been really good about that all week. So I'm going to keep that momentum, whether it's going. just, whether it's yeah. just, okay, I'm checking this email and replying here, right? That's a little thing that I did every single day. So even if it's just 20 to 30 minutes doing something every single day so that I feel that I'm doing what I can 
People might not respond to emails, but I'm gonna send you three, <laughs> okay? Because I then I can say, nice. and I feel good that I've done all that I can do. I cannot make you reply to this email. I can't make you want this, yeah. but <laughs> he's like, I can't make you want this. I can't, right? But all I can do is present it in a way right. that you know um, that makes me feel like I've done what I can do, and the cards are on the table now. You know, and and whatever happens, happens. Mm -hmm. um, so actively trying to work on, yeah, not letting, and that's why I mentioned earlier, like not letting the emotions, not let, not letting emotions influence my actions. Nice. So a few nuggets in there. One for sure that I want to talk about is the fact that you said, and I'm not, I might misquote you, Queen, my apologies, but I'm you here, said, I can fix it. Go, <laughs> going through the barriers is what's going to make you into an entrepreneur or make you into your superhero? Basically, going through, yeah, going through the, the barriers is what's going to make you into the entrepreneur that you want to be. So the example that comes to, to my mind is Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. If Michael Jordan would have made the high school right. team the first time, right. would he have been as great as he was today? Probably not. Right. And that's crazy. Right. That's crazy. Literally him being rejected, saying, no, you're, you're not good enough for this team, forced him to put in the effort, forced him to become the in the mind and in the body, the Michael Jordan that later became the legend. And I feel like after that moment, after he was denied that one time, yeah, he may have been denied later on, but like as far as like losing games, but I felt like his work ethic was never the reason he was denied ever right, again. Right. Tom Brady is another good example of that. Exactly. Right? Being a last, wasn't he? I mm -hmm. believe dead last in the draft mm -hmm. and then got drafted to the Patriots and said told them. This is the best decision you've ever made. Mm. How much guts does it have to take that? How much commitment you you have to have to be mm. able to say that and commit to it mm. and actually see it through? Right. It's crazy. So another another sporting quote, right, is hard work beats talent mm. when talent doesn't work hard. Mm. And I think we're we may be naturally talented in in some things. Like I think I'm a naturally talented speaker. I think I'm naturally creative, but I need to work on certain things to become actually great and be able to be a, above some of the, the average folks out there. Same thing with the queen. I feel like, you know, naturally since, since two years old, you know, you've been grooving. Is that, is that, this that, is, is that this your is, impression this, of this me at two you, years old? This is you at two dancing. Oh, is that... I've seen some of the videos. Maybe this is actually TC, but at two <laughs> years give old. Give me some credit. I look better than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did not. Um, but at two years old, you were already a natural dancer mm -hmm. but you still went through years of dancing training and mm -hmm. hard work to become the amazing dance that you are today come on now mm -hmm. so yeah i feel like whatever your struggles you may be going through again like the queen said i love reframing it as your origin story this is how i'm going to become peter parker this is how i'm going to become tony stark mm -hmm. this is how i'm going to become batman because literally every superhero that we know of has an origin story and went through an initial struggle yeah mm -hmm. Really quick, a side note. Yeah. But I think one of the ways that can help with that, and another re another way that I'm I'm trying right now is, and again, we talked about this a few days ago, but I I feel like throughout my life, I've been there are a few things you know I've, I've been pretty good at school, mm -hmm. but I've been blessed to be relatively intelligent, so that hasn't been too hard, right? But I feel like the things that I wasn't good at, I just didn't do. Mm. So I'm like. I'm not good at bowling. Why would I go bowling? <laughs> right? So it's like, but then you go through we life. Need to go bowling and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I forgot how much you struggle in bowling. I'm we, so we need terrible. To go ahead and go bowling. I'm so terrible. Because it's like, yeah, why would I do things I'm not good at? Mm -hmm. But it's like, there is a muscle that you build mm. by doing things that you're not good at, good at and getting better at it. Yes. So I feel like sometimes. What muscle is that? What would like you the work, I think that? the work ethic, like mm. the hard work, the. I'm not good at this, so I'm going to keep going until I am. Mm -hmm. Like that's something that I feel like we start to stray away from as we get older. I feel like when we're younger, we don't know a lot, so we're just trying to do things. And I feel like we're more eager. We're more. We're less. Um, what's the word I'm trying to look for? We're more likely to just jump into something because, again, yeah, we're young. We don't know how to do anything, so we're <laughs> we're not afraid to go learn things because Walking. we just right, yeah, we're just like, oh, I just want to do all of the things that all of the you know the adults around me can do. Mm. But I feel like as we get older, we get scared to try new things, mm. and we get more comfortable just doing the things that we know 
and not stepping out of that comfort zone to try something that you're not good at. You know what else is we're riffing off of that and sorry, we're, we're going in a lot of, <laughs> a lot of tangent, but really good stuff. Um, you said something about like, you know, trying new things, but then not wanting to do it because you're not good. Yeah. Not good compared to who? Someone who's been doing it. Right. So you're comparing yourself usually to someone else who you see. Like when you're bowling, you're looking over to the right and there's that dude with the gloves on. He got the headband and then he spins the ball. Yes, when they they walk up like this and they uh, spin the ball and then boom, strike. And you're comparing yourself in that moment as a six-year-old, as a 12-year-old, as a 30-year-old to someone who may be a Mm semi-professional. I feel like when you flip it and only compare yourself to your past self, Mm You should, if you're doing it correctly, you should only be getting better, right? right? So you go out there, you know, don't look at anyone else. At, I'm just zooming in on bowling just because that's what we're talking about. Yeah. And we're going to go bowling sometime very soon. So <laughs> stay tuned for some of that B-roll. Um, but as you look in and, you you know, you're going, boom, you got zero, gutter ball. Okay. It's literally only up from there. Next time, boom, I got two pins. Good. Three months later, boom, I'm getting strikes. So it's like if mm-hmm. you just compare yourself to how you're performing you're always as long as you stay consistent going to get better yeah um so i think that's another interesting thing as well i feel like growing up i used to be very self-conscious about reading Mm. because i'm like there's all these kids there was a what was her name leonore yeah yeah shout out to leonore she was a great reader she zooming and i was always like dang I got to go after her. I would read a few lines ahead, trying to memorize some stuff just in case there was a hard word in there. But it's like, Devon, little D, right? (laughs) Concentrate on what you need to do and don't worry about comparing yourself to how other people are reading, how other people are playing basketball, how other people are bowling. Just stick to your practicing and get better with yourself every day or every week. Yep. Yep. Um, Queen, any more you want to talk about your, your journey before we switch over? And Jair, give me a a sign if you do have that video ready. Um, No, I think I'm good. Uh, No, I'm good. What about what about you? What are some examples for you? Good to go. Okay, so I'm going to kind of go in reverse. If we're the video is good, we can go ahead and uh, start that video. But I feel like I've I've been blessed so far in in this journey. I do have two examples. But first, I'm going to start off with Black Wall Street, the board game and kind of do a reverse timeline. Because I think people see, you know, the the Masterpiece Edition where we're at today, but they might not see the the steps and the progress that did lead to it, right? So on the screen right now, if you're watching, we do have the the Masterpiece Edition, beautiful piece of board game and artwork, right? Me and the Queen, we traveled to to New York, repping the t-shirts, put the brand on there. We had the Dreamcatcher series, that was literally sponsored by our own board game. <laughs> uh, we were, yeah, thank you for the pause. We can pause right there for a second. But we had uh, dream catchers where literally, you know, I went out, talked to other entrepreneurs just to get the board game out there, just to get more people eyes on it. YouTube series wasn't, you know, we didn't get crazy views, but we did get a little bit of views and it was very tiring to be honest with you. Uh, we can keep it going with uh, me and the queen in port wanimi packing mm-hmm. boxes yep right remember those days just packing boxes by ourselves in the living room naming out every single name all the cities that were being represented and showing us love love love, love to see it we can keep it going this is me inside of my office i came in late it was like seven o'clock eight o'clock this is a prototype of black wall street the board game i was just capturing some footage and this is some of the footage that we then turned into like a a trailer for uh black wall street the board game inside of dream catchers mm-hmm. um then kickstarter so again we're, we're going back in time we did a kickstarter and i think this was again like th- those were some some wins that we just went through this was probably one of the first major l's right. that that we took but to the queen's point if we didn't move past this failed kickstarter would would there still be a black wall street the board game we don't know we, we we really don't know but the fact that we did fail we got this hit especially i think confidence wise mm. i feel like i was let's say we were 100 successful with the first kickstarter let's say i listened to dame dashes 
uh, kind of thing. He's like, if you're real, you ain't got a market. Da, 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 da. And we did it and, and it blow, it blew up. I then would have thought mentally, I never need to market mm. because I'm real. Right. It worked. Right. Dame Dash was right. I never need to market ever. And then get guaranteed it wouldn't have worked for the long term right. of what we're building. Right. So I think that L was literally a lesson in saying, Devon, you need to market. Devon, you need to be strategic on what you're doing. You need to create some high quality videos. You need to get on social media. You need to make sure you're getting out there because if you don't market, you will not be successful. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that was a huge uh, gut punch, God. but lesson was learned. And now I never need to learn that lesson again. The queen never needs to learn yeah. that lesson again. I tell every other game maker, do it. <laughs> Boom, this, oh, what was she laughing at queen? <laughs> it's just the struggle. Like, that's what I see. So the grind. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Cause I feel like people, people see the outside. People were watching, you know, eight people, 15 people <laughs> were watching the dream catchers series, but this was me in Atlanta did two dream catcher interviews that weekend. I was exhausted, like literally exhausted. I think I might've actually fell asleep. I was supposed to do a little like vlog video mm -hmm. during this thing. It didn't work. I fell asleep, <laughs> <laughs> right? I was exhausted, but on the camera, right? When it was time to, to turn the lights on, when it was time to uh, interview the founders of Guapcoin and Tavana Evans, boom, lights, camera, action. Mm -hmm. When it was time to interview uh, Ariel, am I saying her name right? Ariel? You don't. Uh, ATL, UC Davis. She's oh, into Ariel. like fashion, yeah. Ariel. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it's time to, heart, boom, lights, camera, action. Let's get into it. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's, you know, it's easy to see the, the YouTube and the podcast, but in, in the background, a lot of, of definitely hard work going on. And I think we got maybe two more. Let's hit it. Let's see. And then boom, <laughs> Black Wall Street, the board game. This is like one of our MVPs, first editions. On a cardboard box. On a cardboard box, just printed it out. And this, I, I wanted to put this in here because, again, I feel like people are sometimes afraid to put something out that's not perfect, mm -hmm. right? And this was, you know, it was ugly. You know, I I, I ain't go front like it was, it was even remotely good, but it was a start. And the one even before this was just straight up cardboard. The queen knows it's a straight up cardboard, but that cardboard, we still have it today, and it let us build upon it so if you're you're out there and you're building start off with your mvp minimum viable product start off with your cardboard box whatever equivalent that is for what you're building and every year every month build upon that cardboard box and you are only comparing your game to your cardboard box right i didn't start off saying dang this cardboard box isn't like monopoly maybe we shouldn't even do this like dang this cardboard box isn't as good as sorry maybe we're not good at board games no we're just like you know what this is our step one for show. Mm -hmm. Let's get better the next time. Okay, this is now our, our our new step one. Cool. Let's get better the next time. And literally every single game until the masterpiece hey, hey. has just been getting better and better, only comparing ourselves to us. And then one more. This was the the real first step of of everything, and it was writing it down on a piece of paper. Yep. Step zero. Step zero. Get it out there. All right. The queen talked about earlier um habits that you need to do and practices <laughs> things that you need to practice every day every week in order to become that michael jordan of your field to become the et of your field to become the lebron james of your field it takes that practice so go ahead and write it down write the vision and then yeah accomplish it right so that's i just wanted to, to kind of go through that a little bit as far as just breaking down what people see versus what is the reality of this this grind, right. this process that we go through, right? And then any comments or thoughts on that before I shift to my second example, which is way shorter I than my first. The only comment is I feel like the reason why I think, especially like the younger generations, why we assume, I think like we see a lot of overnight success, quote unquote. And they're not overnight success. I mean, maybe there are some, right? You win the lottery. That's pretty much overnight. But <laughs> not even that, because some people play the same numbers. That's true. 
They go to the same 7-Eleven every single day. Hey, Bob, you here for playing numbers? Yes, I am. All right, here you go, Irene. Good luck with you. <laughs> Bob and Irene. <laughs> I don't know where those numbers, there's names come from. But sorry, go ahead. Um, but I think that social media is part of that, part of the reason for that. Yeah. Because um, I feel like uh, social media is highlights, right? Mm -hmm. It's highlights. So you don't see the daily grind because nobody's walking around. I mean, most people aren't walking around with a camera, you know, throughout their whole life. So you don't see the struggle that they went through on Tuesday when that meeting didn't go the way they wanted to or whatever. Mm. All you're going to see is the business deal close in a month from now or whatever. Right. But that doesn't, you you didn't see all of the things that led up to that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's just the, the mindset to keep in mind if as you're scrolling through social media and not allowing that to, to feel like, oh, I'm not successful because I I'm not like this or right. this didn't happen to me because it didn't happen that way for them either, right? Mm. This is just how they're they're showing it or portraying it. Right. Um, so yeah, I think it's just a good thing to keep in mind. Just like this, like you said, like even if you go on playbackwallstreet.com, we like to be pretty transparent about you know where things started. We well, we've gone through the the different iterations of the board game here, mm -hmm. uh, but still, it's we're not able to to show you every single thing that happened, um, you know, to to get us to this point. Um, so you just have to kind of know that there are always things behind the scenes that are going on, struggles always. that entrepreneurs are going through, um, you know, business, businesses go up and down, right? Um, the profits, the the morale, everything goes up and down. Um, so even though you see this masterpiece, beautiful edition, no, there was a lot of sweat, blood, right. sweat and tears that went into that, that you're not necessarily going to see, you know, on social media or see in the game itself. All right. So long story short, head to playbackwallstreet.com. Get yourself a board <laughs> game, right? What are you doing? Get yourself a second edition or a masterpiece edition. Um, now, something that I think I'm trying to get better in currently is I've had the, the, the gift, but sometimes the stress of having two moms in my life, mm. right? And I feel like recently I've been getting pretty good at communicating to, to both of them but for a long time growing up it was like dang i got two moms or let me focus and only have one mom in my mind mm -hmm. right because if i say that this other person's also my mom or vice versa now i may lose the other one right. and i feel like again growing up it was a little bit of a stress even to this day mother's day is still stressful because like who do i spend mother's day with mm -hmm. uh, uh. but turning that right that seemingly barrier that seemingly Thing that's kind of stressful and a struggle can be turned into a blessing because literally there's two women in my life yep. that are my mom and if i put effort into it that's a lot of love yes. that can come in that's yes. a lot of love a lot of support a lot of wisdom double the family um and of course for those who don't even know me at all i do have my, my dad in my life too have that family locked in so i feel like i need to do a better job at seeing it as a blessing rather than it being stressful rather than being kind of a burden like oh man I gotta worry about two people's feelings. But it's like, no, you get to have two moms in your life. You get to spend Mother's Day with two women. You get to, yeah, just you know, reframe that a little bit and get better at it. Yeah. So that's something that I'm actively gonna be trying to do. I feel like it's been good texting, mm -hmm. but now I need to elevate to the next level, right? Comparing my relationship with my moms only to my relationship with my moms. Right. It's been good texting, been good, you know. So now it's like, let's evolve from that. What, what's now? Boom, right. let's do, you know, go out to lunch once a month. Okay, cool, we did that. All right, now let's go on more vacations, whatever it is, but trying to, again, get better and better and set up those habits, those practices that can make me the Michael Jordan of having two moms. Let's go. Ah, mm. <laughs> so Sinclair, <laughs> yes. you know, just, 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 just for the people watching on the podcast, we gotta go through a coaching moment, right? Okay. So you go here. Really? And you're 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 a lefty or a righty? What what do you want to shoot with? I know the. No, see, it's it's one. one you don't you don't flick both arms. There you go. Because if you flick both arms, the ball is gonna go both ways. Just wow, boom, wow. There you go. If you can make that wrist go straight. Yup. Uh huh. Right there. Boom. <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. We'll get you on the court. See, one and of these I just days. had to fight myself because I wanted to be like, I don't play basketball. I, I don't. Know. I was I know. just like, you know what? Just practice the drill. No, it was live. It was <laughs> live right there. But now you know. Next time, uh, next time you do a a dance, mm -hmm. you can. Have, ooh, come on! Ah, uh, come on! 
Okay. You know us dancers when we try to. We like, yes! Oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, oh. bring it back, bring it back. So that is what we have today for growth mindset. If we can do maybe the definition one more time, and then, of course, you know, create a definition for yourself, something that you can memorize when it comes to growth mindset. For me, it's really... Again, putting in that effort, even though you might not be good at something and comparing your own personal progress to your own personal progress from yesterday. But Queen, can you, because you have better eyes, go ahead and read that for me. So in a growth mindset, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. Mm. They are just the starting point. They are not yes. the end destination. You still have to grow. You still have to work hard. You still have to, you know, grind to get to that. And there's no destination, right? It's always, I think that's the other part of growth mindset is there is not a destination. Mm -mm. Growth is constant. Mm. You know, even when you think about, like they talk about this on the podcast, the S2S podcast too. Um, TJ was like, I was surprised when ET wanted to go back to get his PhD because he had already reached a level of success, but he felt himself like, mm -hmm. no, I want to go get my PhD because I feel like that will take me to the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, that will help me get corporate gigs and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I think no matter what level you're on, there is always more growth. Oh, yeah. So I think again, to your point, only compare yourself to the old version of you. Right. I think that's that's the key there is once you start comparing yourself to others, as I say, comparison is the thief of joy. Right. It, it's, Dang. That's crazy. Marco said that the other day, too. Yeah, that's it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think compare yourself to you yesterday or to your business yesterday or whatever. As long as you are a, a, a slight step further, then you're going to grow. Right. And you just need to keep doing that every single day. And then five years, you're going to look back and be like, wow. Wow, I've, I've grown. Big facts. I've grown. Big facts. Yeah. Um, nerd moment. I'm saved. I, like I do too. Um, I'm saved in my phone as Devon from the past. Oh, I love. I love. Love these conversations. <laughs> So sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll text myself, either it's a good thing, it can be a bad thing, it can be a reminder, but yeah, it just comes up, Devon from the past, and then I'll thank, oh, thank you, Devon from the past, I, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was just a little round tidbit. Um, so before we officially end, again, the, the book that we're kind of pulling some of this knowledge, some of this frequencies from, is Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Dr. Carol D. Uh, no, not for to guess it. All right, Dr. I Carol Dweck, Dweck, right? Dweck, Dr. Carol Dweck. Um, <clears throat> my reading style these days is I don't necessarily read the full book. Like I'll pick it up, I'll read a chapter, read another chapter, get some knowledge here, set it down. Sometimes I go back to it. So I haven't digested this full book, but what I've gotten from it is some really good stuff. And she really focuses in on the kind of psychology of failure. Mm -hmm. After you fail, what is it that you do? How much do you try afterwards and kind of stuff like that? So really good book. If you're trying to take yourself to the next level, no, it's not no type of plug or anything, but go ahead and get it. Mindset, the new psychology of success by Carol right Dweck. There. Appreciate you, Jair. You know what I'm saying? Jair out here. And another great one. And I'll plug Jair real quick, right? We started off on, uh, what is this? What is StreamYard? Mm -hmm. And it, it was new, it was different. I was like, all right, Jair, you know, put, put in some titles, put in the names here, put in like and subscribe here. And every single episode, my man Jair be getting better. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. There was a there was a time at the beginning where it was like we had to say a few times, like, all right, and then go ahead and put the graphic. <laughs> okay, yep. When you're ready, go ahead and put the graphic. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're just gonna we're, we're just gonna wait for the graphic. <laughs> <laughs> there was a time where that happened but now it's like boom the graphic be up we say it once and sometimes it's even up before we right. say it he got the videos going so appreciate even jair in the background getting better and better at what he does professionally making the true of every podcast go to the next level making sure that y'all on youtube get a good experience so love it man love it um okay queen king queen king <laughs> appreciate you um how was your week? Let's go ahead and, and get into a nice short, short debrief on how your week was. Um, my week was pretty good. Um, like I said, I was really, you know, per a conversation we had last week, sometime. A couple of them. Yeah. yeah a couple. Of them. 
Um, I feel like I've been really trying to focus on like the discipline side of like, you, you say you want to meet this goal, you want to do this, then make it happen, mm -hmm. right? And I've had to actively tell myself a few times how you feel about it is irrelevant. Mm. Hey, sometimes you got to bully yourself. And sometimes you really do. Because it's like, and it's one of those like take your own advice situations. Like mm. I was like, if somebody was, <laughs> if somebody, if I was coaching somebody and they were like, Sinclair, you know, I'm trying to lose weight and I just, I, I keep struggling because, you know, I, I don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. and that would, I mean, eventually that would be my advice. So of course, you know, you got to come a little softer, right? But eventually if you, if that person, as I have, right, have struggled over and over at some point, it's like your, your emotions are irrelevant. Mm. If you want it, go out and get it, period. So long story short, that has been pretty much my mindset throughout the week. Mm. Um, so yeah, I've been, I, I feel good. Nice. Cause I think, um, you look good. Thank you. In terms mm -hmm. of like, <laughs> stop. Um, so in terms of like eating pretty good this week, um, in terms of getting some type of movement in every single day, even if it's like the other day, I think I was, I made, I don't know if I, if I got dinner, if I made dinner, but one of the nights, um, I was like, shoot, I didn't do too much today. So I literally went on the floor and I just did like five minutes of animal flow, mm -hmm. five to 10 minutes. And I got, I, I, by the time I, I was done, yeah, I was like, <gasps> literally <laughs> on the like, floor because first of all i'm not it, it's if you've ever done it it's a full body workout so when oh. you're doing it and you're doing it fast i was trying to like switch up my speeds i'll go slow and then i'll go fast like whew, full body workout that's another thing yeah. but anyways um i was just making sure like do something every day even today um it was i you know i didn't get out like the king early in the morning like i should have to do my workout um but the old me would have been like oh yeah it's too hot you good girl go ahead and <laughs> sit on the couch maybe do some yoga mm. um but i was like it's hot so mm. put on your shoes what you doing so i went out i did a little walk run i did a little sprint i look at first i was like this is gonna be a sprint day i did not go as far as well i did one sprint and i was mm. like okay you're gonna pass out if you keep doing Smart this move. <laughs> right, no, right. Know limits, right right know your limits right right know your but limits but that doesn't mean you stop the workout so it was just like okay instead of sprinting jog mm. so i did a jog i would you know jog to a shady spot then i would stop and do some squats and then i'd walk and then i'd jog again get to another shady spot, stop and do some squats. So long story short, I'm telling myself no excuses. You know, you've been trying to meet these goals. It hasn't been happening. And now it's time to just get into that grind mode where your emotions are on in this, in this not emotions in general, right? right? But your emotions on this issue are irrelevant because you want to make it happen. You know, you want to make it happen. And you know that when you don't make it happen, you feel some type of way yeah. and you're tired of feeling like that. I'm tired of feeling like mm. that, you know? Yes, so. I'm ready to, to to commit to make some change. So, and that's pretty much a microcosm. Like I'm, I'm applying to a lot of different areas of my life. Mm. Um, but yeah, in terms of like this week, we were talking about like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do like juices or smoothies. Yep, I did it. And mm. I don't know, I didn't even like say anything to you because I didn't want to, I didn't want to be doing it for the any praise from you. Nice. Right. And I wanted to make sure like. I'm doing these things and I'm only doing it because I said so and because I wanted to do it, if that mm. makes sense. So, yeah, like Monday through Wednesday, I did juices or smoothies for lunch and then we ate chili for, for dinner. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with my my week and my accomplishments for the week. I did, you know, work stuff every single day. Um, I worked out. I ate well. I meditated. That was another thing where I was like, you get into these mindsets where you have a lot going on and you feel like you don't have time to meditate and that only exacerbates the situation further. Mm -hmm. So take the five minutes, even if it means you won't be five minutes late to work, yeah. it'll, it'll be, you'll be in a better mindset. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that too. So yeah, I'm pretty, I feel accomplished for the week and I'm excited to continue it on to next week. And then we go vacation. Yes, so I feel like do. that's helping too. And I'm like, just, you gotta grind to deserve that vacation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then go right back afterwards. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, I feel I feel pretty good. I feel accomplished. I'm I'm revved up. Nice. Let's get it quick. <laughs> um, I like the part. I mean, I like it, but I don't like it. The fact that your emotions don't care about right now. You know, a part of me is like, dang, Queen, don't be so hard on yourself. But I also like it the fact that 
your emotions in this moment mm-hmm. does not outweigh your long term emotions. Right. You said something about if I don't, if I don't get my goals, how am I going to feel then? Right. And I feel like sometimes we let you know this this one day of emotions or even the five ten minutes of emotions outshadow what happiness we could have if we push past that. So right. let, let, let's see it, Queen. Well, Thank well done. You're doing your thing. You're doing your thing. Thank you. Um, my week was pretty good. Uh got I mean most of the stuff that, that happened I can't say yet. 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 So but you know hopefully so, some some changes may may be coming. Um but as y'all can see we got some new swag new t shirts on. I don't know if y'all y'all peep this right but when we went out to Tulsa, we met the living survivors of the massacre that happened in 1921. So we were able to to talk talk with them a little little bit of business, and we were able to create some products specifically that represent their legacy. Um, so we got Mother Randall on here, we got Mother Fletcher on here, we got Uncle Red on here. Um, they're on the shirts. Have four different types of shirts. Um, the Queens. Her says this is a quote from Mother Fletcher. I still see the fire. I still smell the smoke. Mm. Right? It was a powerful quote that she said during the I think interview. So we going got got that on there. We got make America remember, making sure that people in schools, people families, like people just know about the history. Like we know about George Washington, we know about Abraham Lincoln, we should know about Tulsa's Black Wall Street cuz it is a part of the history. So, t-shirts popping. Um now, something that's not so fun, these Masterpiece Editions oh. are almost ready, right? It was a, oh my gosh. So we were, not we, I mean, it was mostly me just completely stressing. It was a queen being like, Devon, it's okay. Shh. So at the moment, you didn't have anything to stress about. We get, I don't know if you're going to get into it. I'm not going to get into okay. the, the full details, but in, long story short, we we discovered an error in the game. And the error was on the manufacturer's fault. I didn't know that at the time. At the time, we was going through the error, and I was like, oh my gosh, did I do this? Did I mess up? Did Is this my fault? Oh, I can't believe I let this happen. And literally, I'll go ahead, Queen. I, was, I just wanted to point out that this was, this was, we found this error while playing. So yes. there was just a noticeable like shift. <laughs> yeah, we were playing again. Right, right. Yeah, oh, hi. And all of a sudden, it was like, I'm like, it came. I was like, okay, well, we can we can stop this game. I mean, I was winning, so it was like, you know, I don't want to hurt you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm so yeah, we went ahead and stopped. But uh, we, I thought we finished. Oh, I did win. Yeah, yeah. you won. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah. We, we did. We did play after that. You know, yeah. you, you calmed down a little bit. But like, yeah, long story short, there was this uh, an error in there, and it was uh, yeah, it was it was very stressful. I then went to the game files. I went to the history. We used this manufacturer several times. And I went to and I was like, no, I submitted the files correctly. Everything was good on this side. It was a printing error. And I reached out to them and they said, oh, yes, this was a printing error. We'll go ahead and fix it free of charge. But it will be a little delay in the games." And I was like, all right, well, at least it's going to be fixed. At least we found that error again. Like, whew, at least we found that error now. Because if it was a printing error, that means it would have printed like that. Right. And we would have had a thousand board games out there with this error. So glad, glad we fixed it and glad we found it. Um, but yeah, I was very stressed for that. Uh, probably solid six hours. And then the next day I felt a little bit good until the queen was like, wow, you, you're you not stressed today about it. And I was like, oh my God, you're I right. I was like, shoot, why did I bring it up? <laughs> good, but hey, just more, more of the struggles, more of the origin stories. You know, Masterpiece couldn't be perfect, you know? Got to have a little struggle in the masterpiece <laughs> in order for it to be legendary like it is. Um, but, yeah, go to PlayBlackWallStreet.com. Go ahead and get yourself a board game. Get yourself a T-shirt. Queen, what should they get at TrueHealthForever.com? Oh, TrueHealthForever.com. Uh, we got a four-week intermittent fasting plan. You know, I know we are in summer, but, you know, if you're in California, we pretty much got summer all year. So yeah. it's not too late for you to get that summer body. Um, and then we also have the uh, ebook, smoothie ebook, uh, seven smoothie recipes to live your best life. It is hot, mm. and smoothies feel great and taste great in the morning when it's hot. So go and get your uh, four, sorry, not four, almost seven. seven yeah. Thank you. Yeah, seven it. smoothies to live your best life at the True Health Forever website. Yes. Um, and then last but not least, if we have it, 
Um, and Jaya, you can give me a signal. If we have the, the wedding stuff, we can pull up the wedding videos. Uh, so, so my cousins, Brandon and Amanda, they've been rocking together for 16 years. They tied the knot. It was a beautiful wedding, a nice little mini family reunion here. So, you know, shout out to the new couple, Mr. and Mrs. Sanchez. It was beautiful. They had a dope. Oh, oh, oh. I, know, he was right. I can hear right it in my there. head. I can hear it in my head. Uh, I always talk about my grandma. That was my grandma right there. There's the first dance doing their thing, all hugged up. And then, of course, you know, we got the queen. She was dancing, doing her thing. Mm -hmm. gang. Um, so, yeah, it was, a, it was a lovely ceremony. Great weather out there in Rancho Palos Verdes. Um, and then, again, it was just really good to be around family. And fun fact, it was the first like formal event that I was just locked up. Yeah. Especially from family. I just let the locks hang. I got some good compliments from the yeah. family, too. They're like, oh, wow, look at the locks. I see you with the swag. I was like, oh, thanks. Yeah. I wasn't, wasn't sure how this was going to go at a wedding. So I'm <laughs> glad it worked out. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Thank y'all as usual for tuning in to the True Health Forever podcast, the TH4 podcast, where we tell our best life uh, 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 through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. I'm Sinclair, aka the the health, health nerd. nerd. We hope y'all stay healthy. We hope y'all stay mentally wealthy. And of course, we hope y'all. Stay, Stay true. true.